Is there anything else going on that I should know about? Uh, you know, I'm no, 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 I don't like so. Okay, so everything's great with, let's say, uh, your magic. Welcome to uh, your critic here. First off, uh, congratulations on what you have done. I think it's a very um, a beautiful piece of animation that you have here. Um, happy to see how well you thought about it, the way you executed it, uh, the um, all the attention to details that you have, and the environment that you have is pretty amazing. It's a it's a, a production level at um, on a lot of points. You know, it's a, it's it's a really good and um, not the the flattering kind. So uh, you can take my word for it. I'm uh, Sydney Combo. I'm a senior animation supervisor at Weta FX. Um, yeah, I've been spending uh, the past uh, nine years. Uh, they are now um, enjoying every bit of it. I uh, supervised uh, um, animation most recently on uh, um, on the last uh, Avatar, but a um, um, lot of Marvel work, a little bit of feature animation back in the days, and uh, it's still something that we. Uh, look, we will we look at with a lot of admiration and uh, still eager to do that. We do time to times on a few little projects that we have over there at Weather as well. So uh, really great to have a chance to to comment on this, to look at this uh, together. Like I said, uh, I'm, I'm nicely uh, uh, you know uh, surprised by the quality of work that comes out of a uh, Eleven Second Club. Every time I have a chance to look at it, and this one just follows the tradition. So once again, congratulations on this. Um, I think I'm going to approach these critics. Um, uh, we're going to try to break it down in three different stages. You know, um, a quick two, three words on the... Um, on the overall uh, setup of your scene, the direction of it, if you will. And then we're gonna talk about the body mechanics, uh, the few areas or the few concepts that I think can be improved um, on and and then spend a little bit of time on, on the facial as well. Okay, so let's dive in. Um, I think, if we play it just once to to put ourselves back into the con the, the context of this, uh, you know, I'm, 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 no, no, I'm, I'm not okay. So everything's great with, let's say, uh, your magic. Is there anything else going on that I should know about? Uh, you know, I'm, 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 I
only once, right? They are not something that we're going to watch over and over as we have a chance to do, obviously, when we do single shots like this. And clarity of presentation is a big deal. Like the clarity of the presentation of your idea is something that you really want to have that to take the time to do properly. So again, taken individually, a lot of what you are doing is great. But once you combine them, you see this moment, for instance, right here, the moment when these guys start jumping, the, the girl on the right start move, having a big movement as well. And the, the old man start taking the step forward as well. And then he shakes a lot when all of this is happening in the background. And when the big movement happens here, the three of them are also making a big, the three of them are also making a big move at the same time. So it's a very important that you understand that all of this action needs to be separated, needs to be approached, um, you know, broken down, if I can put that that way. Okay, so at times, all that matters is just that you take a moment to readjust all of it timing wise, you know, you shift the timing of one of the characters against the other, and that may do the trick. Okay. Cool. So that was the first thing that I wanted you to to look at and pay attention uh, attention to. At the end here, the action that you have works pretty well because now these two are, you know, saddled, where uh, in the background keeps active, and that makes sense. You know, now it's a lot easier for me to know what you want me to look at. Cool. Uh, another thing that you can do on this uh, on on this front for this is simply playing with the rack focus that you have. You are you are using it once at the very end here, but another place where I would suggest that you just to give it a try would be here. When all this action is happening, I would try to defocus these guys and keep the focus of the action right on, right on what is happening in the background. You know, just again, to see what that would give you. Because my feeling is that what is happening here at the moment is irrelevant. And what I want to see is what's going on in the background for this beat. Okay. And then when this guy falls on the ground, boom, you can come right back to the front of the scene. And so that we can see the girl reacting and the old man. And then you can go back to the, 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 the right focus that you have again at the end. Oh, so those, those would be, in terms of scenery, the, the two main things that I wanted to talk about. It's just, it just a, a, um, you know, a little bit of clarity in the way you are leading the eye of the, your audience. Sweet. Now, body mechanic-wise... Let's uh, let's focus our attention first on the character in the background. Cool. So what is happening in the background with your main character here? It just feels like the overall spacing that you have is a little floaty. You know, we we have the feeling that is almost bouncing, uh, especially at the beginning, if we just to focus on the beginning of the action at first, there, when it starts coming in, you see that? The spacing there is very, very slow. That. Okay, so you want to speed that up a little bit. And when I say speed it up, I don't mean just by uh, getting the keys closer together, but it's really a matter of considering 
the, the, the bouncing ball for that moment, making sure that we have that sense of slowing down at the tip, if I call it slowing down, and that you have the strong change of spacing as it comes down, stays down a little bit and start jumping again and then landing again. Okay, so you just want to spend a little bit of time there in tightening the spacing that you have to help. I'm not saying that you need to change the timing of your action, but you definitely need to improve its spacing. Okay. Cool. Because same deal with this moment when he lands here, just feels like right there. You see how much the body is traveling forward? Boom, boom, it travels forward, travels forward, and then the momentum of the body going forward somewhat stops. So the body gets locked in this place and the feet takes a lot of time getting to the ground. Okay, and then you have a little bit of acceleration. So you you know uh, uh, if you don't, uh, uh, that's what I'm saying, that when the momentum is generated, the, the, the inertia is going to slow down, you know, to, to lose its energy at some, uh, uh, the energy of the body traveling forward will uh, die a little bit. But in midair like this, there's no reason for this to slow down. It's as if someone was holding it back uh, at some point. You just need to keep the energy of the body going forward. Okay. Cool. So that's, uh, and you have that on a few other places, like, when your character steps forward right here, just feels like I'm talking about her. It just feels like there is a very sharp acceleration, you know, to the right. I'm not saying that it's the forward movement, but it's definitely the one that takes her to the right. That just feels a touch too fast compared to the rest of the bit. Okay, just just uh, looking at that a little bit would help. Cool. And same deal in terms of uh, spacing, you just have this action here that feels a little slow on the movement that she is doing. Now, I think the reason why this action feels a little slow and floaty it's because you have a lot of, you know, uh, 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 animation concepts in terms of curve and overlapping action uh, that you just push the touch too far. You know, when you are trying to be surprised, uh, so when you're trying to surprise someone by pointing at him, this movement can be a lot more direct. It doesn't need to come in a very nice curve, okay? And if you make it in, an, in, in, a, in a curve, you can still make it really sharp and really direct. But I think this is one good opportunity to break away from having a, a very nice curve all over the place and just making one movement very direct and very sharp. And I know that Compared to the body, the head of your character is pretty big, but when you overlap it down this much, it just gives the feeling that she's not really focused, you know, that she's not trying to keep her eye on whoever she's accusing. So it's, are you also, you know, are you also? It doesn't need to be, are you also, okay? Just a direct, and you can play the rest of the action just with... You can still have an overlap, but instead of being a rotation X or rotation Z, whichever one it is here, rotation X, I will say, uh, um, action on the head, you can just have a little bit of bone, a little bit of Z roll that will come back on the, on the head, okay? Just, just uh, mixing it up a little bit like that 
will allow for uh, your animation to feel just a touch sharper and a touch more direct on this uh, on this last action. Because I like the anticipation that you have. I like the fact that it comes from the body the way it does there. Cool. Something else, still on the body mechanic, and I'm just going to point at it on some specific spots, right? Uh, it's just when the arm moves, it feels really isolated. It feels like you are not engaging the rest of the body on the movement on some of some of the parts. The connection between the arm of the, and the shoulders is not really reading. Uh, and when she's riding down, it's absolutely understandable. But when the arms start traveling up, you want to give a sense that the movement gets generated in the shoulder and doesn't just start directly on the arm. Okay? So on a moment like this, it would be great. Let me just make that as small as I can. It would be great for you just to have a little bit of uh, the shoulder rising in this moment. So that when you go there, same deal, you just have the shoulder slightly higher and then the shoulder drops there, boom. Okay, same deal with that hand and arm. Okay, the way she gets there, boom, the entirety of the body here stops at the same time. So I understand that the chest stops, but the arm being lighter than the chest still needs to have a little bit of motion. So when you see this, the forearm should just drop a bit pulling the arm forward a touch more. Even if at the tail end, it settles back in a position closer to what you have. But you want to give us a, a chance to understand that the turn here still has the momentum of the arm going forward beyond the chest and then coming back, okay? Cool. And then there is just, I'm um, just giving you everything, right? So that, uh, you know, uh, you cherry pick in it what you can try to address. But I'm going to try to give you as many uh, indications as I can in the time that we have. So this bit is also something that you can definitely look to improve. I think the wrist. The wrist is just breaking too early. It should be that the forearm stop and the wrist breaks. Boom. Okay. Boom. Boom. Right now, it seems like the wrist is leading the action. And when the wrist is leading the action, even if it's leading the action, when the forearm stops, the wrist is still going to have a little bit of a bounce. Okay. Cool. So that's that where the main thing on her. We're gonna chat about her face uh, for for a bit as well. The the old man is pretty funny. There is just one or two things that I wanted to point out on him, and that is basically the moment when he has the steps. Not this one, but this one. It's I like the beginning when you're making him step, okay? Because it seems like when the step happens, we have a little bit of up and down on the body, right? So when you look here, that's what you did. Up, down, up, down, okay? That plays pretty nicely. But then when we come here, it just feels like the body moves, but you don't see the same quality of up and down there. I think 
that is missing here. And if you play with that, we're going to have a better feeling, especially for the amount of little steps that he's taking. It just feels a little, um, you know, uh, an appealing in a sense that a little magical, if I can put it that way, because the body is moving, uh, the body is pretty uh, static on the Y translation, and the legs keeps on moving. So the thing is that it doesn't have the comical effect of someone just quickly shifting the legs around. Here, it just feels like it's something missing because uh, you give you gave that to us at the beginning of the shot. Okay, so that that's something that I would uh, that I would flag. I like I like the overall spacing and pretty much most of what you have done on the little mushroom that is on the ground there. There are some moments uh, here, uh, same deal, where I would say when he lands, it still feels like it lands. Uh, really softly there, boom, as if you wanted to make sure that when you get cl the closer you get to the ground, the faster the spacing is. So you want to to uh, fast in the ground, okay, not ease into it. And same deal here after this action when he lands, boom, it just feels like he lands too softly. Okay, and the way he's pulling the guy away, that works as well. Now, let's spend just a few minutes on the eyes of the character. I think the eyes of these guys are working pretty well. Uh, uh, I just want to talk a little bit about the eyes of your main character here. It just feels like they are a little floaty. And sometimes she has a little bit of glassy eyes. This moment here, uh, you know, um, eye darts are pretty sharp. Um, and the eyes don't slide from one position to the next. It's usually boom, boom, you know, boom, boom. And at times that happens, but it's really when you're trying to follow something that is moving close to you and really slowly, right? Uh, but when you are looking at someone, this moment here just feels like we are, uh, the, the eyes are in local space on the head, so to speak. Okay? On local space on, uh, on the head. I would say that it would be great if you could just give a, a sharper um, a movement uh, to uh, to the dart, the darting that you have here. Same deal. When we come this moment here, it feels like your character just has glassy eye, and I don't know anymore what she's looking at. I'm buying that she's looking at her, you know, uh, um, sketchbook. In this moment, I'm kind of buying it. And then when I come here, I feel like she's looking past it. This moment works somewhat okay, but then it's the overall shape of the eyes that doesn't seem to work. I think this corner is just a touch too high. You want to, you know, it's like you're breaking the model a little bit. You are uh, off model touch. I would just pull that down a bit. Okay, and I think you just have two complex shapes on your eyes. I think your eyes are just you changing the shape of the eyes too much. Find the design that you want for them and stick to it and let the brows, uh, sorry, the brows, the eyelid come down and up. You can change that shape, but, uh, you know, you have to be super careful how much of it you change through the course of the curse of your shot, uh, uh, the course of your shot, because it feels like 
the eye shape is changing too often throughout the shot, especially on this last bit. Okay? And I also think that uh, lip sync wise, there is a little bit of effort that we can give. There are some moments where it feels like we are a little off. I think overall it works pretty well, but there are just a few moments that I'm going to point no, out to you now. Anything else going on that I should know about? So the about, for instance. <laughs> You see here at the bout, um, we the mouth open. So this moment is just a little confusing. I love that no. Uh, yeah, so uh, if we look at it again... Is there anything else going on that I should know about? Uh, you know, I'm sure... No, no, I'm sure... Okay, so everything's great with, let's say... Uh, your magic? I know that the, uh, the the rig and the puppet as you have, it doesn't necessarily allow you to have big change of shapes on, on, on your lip sync, but there are a few that I think could definitely help your animation a touch more. And I think your, uh, these guys uh, present a bit more of them. I would say if you have a chance to pull the mouth forward just a little bit, funneling it just like this at times would definitely help uh, uh, the story that you're telling. I like this little shape that you have here, but like I said, on those ones, I'm just imagining the mouth of your character being pulled forward just a touch more to make it more uh, uh, more appealing and also uh, exaggerated a little bit in terms of shape. Okay? Yeah, I could keep on going with uh, this, because like I said, uh, it's uh, there are so much that you have done and nicely done, and there are a few things that you know if we can tie them up, if you can... Uh, 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 improve uh, uh, those shapes at times if you can improve the, the sharpness of your spacing here and there. Your timing works great. Overall, your timing works great, but just the changing, making some of the action a touch sharper, uh, uh, a touch more direct, uh, okay, uh, reducing the, the intensity of the, the, the overlapping action in some places, adding a little bit of uh, secondary action on uh, uh, on uh, other uh, other places will definitely uh, uh, help this animation piece take the next level. I hope that uh, this gives you a little bit of um, uh, help in terms of uh, seeing how much and where you can push it. Uh, and um, I wish you the best possible journey in the animation world. And uh, keep the passion alive. It's um, it's great to see you guys doing it for nothing else but a few minutes uh, of uh, someone like me commenting on it and uh, trying to give you the best possible notes. With that said, Lois, wish you the best. Till next time. Bye-bye.